Hi, I'm Chris from Practical Navigator. Welcome to our course, Fundamentals of the Maneuvering Board. In this series, we'll take a look at how to use the radar and a maneuvering board to help you make better collision avoidance decisions at sea. We'll also learn how to complete wind calculations. So let's get right to it. The maneuvering board is designed to replicate a radar screen. So before we get into the MoBoard itself, let's spend a couple minutes on how radar works for you. Radar stands for radio detection and ranging, but it's actually its own word in the dictionary now. I won't give you a history or detailed description, but let's cover the basics. Radar works on the principle of reflection, using pulse modulation or cycles of on, off, on, off in order to have a listening time to receive echoes. Radar determines the range to a target based on how long it takes a signal to travel from you to the contact and back. This all happens at 162,000 nautical miles per second, so you actually have many signals per second. That number is called the frequency and it is measured in hertz. Generally speaking, there are two types of marine radar and they differ based on their frequency. First is S-band radar, which operates at 3000 Hz or cycles per second. This band is used for long-range measurements. The second type is X-band radar, which operates at 10,000 Hz and is good for short-range contacts. If you've operated a shipboard radar before, you're probably familiar with the options between true and relative mode. With the radar in true mode, it indicates the true course and speed of any contact. However, relative mode indicates the risk of collision based on relative motion. The primary point of a marine radar is to help you make decisions about collision avoidance. And as such, the most important concept is that of relative motion. With a radar in true mode, it may tell you where the contact is going, but in relative mode, it'll tell you whether it's going to hit you. When dealing with moboards, we'll deal mostly with relative motion, so it's a good idea to keep the radar in relative mode. Another menu item is pulse length, which is how long the radar is actually on. A short pulse length is good for minimum range determination and target resolution, while a long pulse length is good for long range scanning. If you take away nothing else, just realize that S-band and X-band radar each serve a different purpose. So now that you have a contact on radar, what are we going to do about it? In most cases you use the fancy electronics which are built into your shipboard radar's ARPA or Automatic Radar Plotting Aid. However, understanding how the radar actually works is always a good idea and the MoBoard is a way to gain that understanding. Additionally, it's a required competency for many deck watch officers, bosun's mates, and operations specialists. Let's take a look at the parts to the maneuvering board. As I mentioned earlier, the MoBoard is a representation of your radar screen and your vessel is assumed to be in the center. It is a polar coordinate plotting sheet designed specifically for solving relative motion problems. Range rings expand outward from your location in each direction. The ranges can be changed by using any of the preset scales for measurement. The last part of the MoBoard is the nomogram at the bottom. This is a handy speed distance time calculator so that if you know any two values you can calculate the third very easily. It functions much like a speed wheel, just a manual version. One thing to note about MoBoards and relative motion calculations in general, we'll be dealing with vectors. Vectors are representative of velocity, which is different than speed. A velocity is a time rate of motion in a specific orientation. In other words, a magnitude and a direction, like southwest at 18 knots, or east-northeast at 6 knots. So let's plot our first contact. The idea is to watch the radar and note the bearing and range to the contact, then transfer the data to the maneuvering board. Each point is annotated with a letter, typically M, or a time. In this case, we'll do both. Then, plot the same contact two or more times at a specific interval, usually either three minutes or six minutes. This is for easy application of the three or six minute rule, but for now, we'll just plot. When we have three points, draw a line of best fit through the points and extend it off for a good distance. This line is called the line of relative motion and it represents the path the contact will take relative to you if neither ship changes its vector. You can measure the relative motion line and come up with a degree value. It's generally not necessary except in academic cases, but in this case the direction of relative motion is 262 degrees true. Let's plot one more example. Again, we'll plot three points and label them. Then we'll draw the relative motion line, and in this case, the relative motion line comes right towards our ship in the center of the board. 
This is a case of constant bearing and decreasing range. If neither ship alters its vector, the two ships will collide. CBDR indicates risk of collision, so this is definitely something you want to watch out for. If you'd like some more practice, try this example. In this episode, we've learned a bit about how the radar works and how the maneuvering board can give you a better understanding of your shipboard radar in order to make collision avoidance decisions. In the next episode, we'll learn how to calculate CPA, or closest point of approach, for the contact that we plotted today.